morning po once again and thank you for joining our Sunday Zoom service. I hope that you have read your Bible. We'll be studying 1 Samuel 13 up to 20. So with this, uh, para lang po may recap tayo last, last week, uh, we talk about Saul, the starting of his kingship in Israel. Saul was the first king of Israel. He was the son of Kish of the tribe of Benjamin. And he became king when Israel rejected God and Samuel from reigning over them. So na, naalala niyo po na nireject po ng mga Israelites ang, uh, ang Panginoon bilang king nila and even the leadership of Samuel. So they were demanding a king. Now, meron din na na-encounter sa Bible, sabi niya sa Hosea 13.11, Recalling this act, the Lord said, I gave thee a king in my anger. So, Sometimes, God will really give us the desires of our heart, but in His anger. Ibig sabihin, hindi yan approved ng Diyos, pero binibigay sa atin dahil sa katigasan din ng ulo natin. So, bakit hindi po approve ang Diyos kay Saul? Because the tribe of Benjamin had been given no promises concerning the throne. Kasi pag biribihin nyo sa Genesis, even sa Deuteronomy, nag-prophesy po, uh, si um, Joseph at uh, si Jacob and even si, si Moses about the destiny of every tribe. Now, Benjamin, si Saul po kasi galing sa tribe of Benjamin, wala pong promises about the throne. And yet, Saul, was, uh, he came from the tribe of Benjamin. So, unlike David, Saul was not fulfilling any prophecy. Why then was Saul appointed to the kingship? The children of Israel looked around at the nations that surrounded them. They saw that the other nations had kings to rule them, and they said, we want to be like other nations. So, nakita natin dito na uh, they were demanding something that outside of God's will. That is very dangerous, huh? How careful we must be when we pray. We must make sure that the desires of our hearts are in alignment with the will of God. So I can just really share with you that every time we pray, make it be in alignment with the will of God. Marami po kasi tayong hinihingi sa Panginoon that unknowingly na hindi po siya kasama at uh, kalakit sa kalooban ng Diyos. So it is very safe to pray after, at the end of our prayer, Lord, but thy will be done. This is I present to you my prayer, but thy will be done, just like the Gethsemane prayer of Jesus Christ. How important it is to see that our hearts are truly in tune with God and that we are seeking the things that He has decided for us. Otherwise, we will have leanness in our souls. Kaya nga may times na binibigay sa atin ni Lord, pero ano yung kablalabasan nun? Usually, when God grants us the desires of our hearts, it should deepen our dependency on God. We are growing in intimacy with God. But the moment we get the desires of our hearts and it gives leanness to our souls, meaning nanglalamig tayo, nawawala tayo sa ating commitment, nababawasan yung ating passion for Christ, then what God granted in our life is not in line with His will. Kaya importante po na lagi nating sasabihin, it takes faith to really say this to God na Lord, I presented to you my request, pero kung meron ka pong ibang kalooban aside from this, then thy will be done, not mine. It takes faith to pray for that kind of prayer. Nevertheless, but if God okay, gives us that kind of uh, desire in our hearts, kasi kahit yung desire natin, ibibigay pa rin niya. Kaya lagi natin hindi na, Lord, I pray that you will give me the desire that according to your Word. Remember, sabi niya, if you delight yourself, He will give you the desires of our hearts. But then, bakita natin, we delight first. Ibig sabihin, inuuna natin ang Diyos, then our desire is in line with His will. Then He will grant it because it is in accordance to His will. The children of Israel refused to listen to Samuel. Kasi nag-aargue si Samuel eh, na may king kayo, ako yung leader nyo, ayaw pa rin. Because they wanted to be like all the other nations. Somehow, people find security in their bandage. But having put something into motion, the children of Israel started to reap the consequences. It is an awesome thing to put something in motion because there come a time when one will reap the consequences. Meaning, 
sa mga choices natin, when we are really stubborn with our choices, then we will be in that kind of path na tuloy-tuloy na parang you have started a pattern in your life, then you put something into motion, ibig sabihin na magtutuloy-tuloy na yan. So, you will reap the consequences. But Israel set into motion something that was just as irrevocable. Hindi na mababawi kasi binigay na sa kanila ni Lord. They set into motion a desire that was contrary to the will of God for their lives. And God went along with it. Kaya nga minsan, akala natin, maraming mga ministers, maraming Christians, kala natin na si God is going along with us kasi binihinaalaw niya. But little did we know na some Time, he will allow it in our life, but it will we will reap a consequence or sometimes consequences. We think that if something is contrary to the will of God, then God will put every obstacle in our way. No, God will not. Kaya nga, hindi porket na contrary yun, ihaharangan tayo ng Panginoon. Okay, I discover in my Christian life, God will always preserve, okay? In my life, okay, in my testimony, God will always put uh, hindrances or intervene niya to preserve me because of His purpose. Kasi alam niyang Panginoon yung heart ko. I always tell God, Lord, I don't know everything. I may not understand everything. But, sabi ko gano, please intervene in my life that I, can, I will only do yung gusto mo. Kasi in a way, along the way sa ating journey, nadederail din tayo eh. Parang bumabiyahe tayo, nawawala tayo sa past, and then akala natin na okay lahat kay Lord. But then, God will always intervene. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo, that every time that uh, meron pong, uh, uh, tawag na ito, God will always intervene in a way that uh, when we are growing, okay, when we have a life of uh, surrendered, will, nakita ko dito that you God has a shorter leash in my life. Ibig sabihin, para bang, uh, para bang may tali. Okay? Pag binigyan ka ng mahabang tali, ibig sabihin, mas maluwag, mas mar- marami kang freedom. Pero as you grow mature in the Lord, ay nakikita ng Panginoon ng puso natin, paikli ng paikli yung leash na yan, yung tali. Ibig sabihin, Uh, makonti nga pagkakamali lang, parang, alam mo yun, parang ikokorek ka agad. So, pag, di ba ang aso, pag mahaba ang uh, tali, ang gulo-gulo niyan, ang ruli niyan, wala siyang discipline. Pero the moment makikita ko rin may mga uh, pet, mga dog, sa, kunyari, pag naglalakad po ako sa Makati, nakikita ko may mga dog sila na ang ikli lang ng tali nila. Kasi pagka uh, pumalag yung aso, ang dali nilang ano, hen, parang... Uh, i-control. Okay? That is what it means. When God is pleased with our life, He will give us a shorter leash. Meaning, madali na tayong i-correct niya. Madali na tayong uh, uh, tawag nito, control yung life natin. Madali kasi teachable tayo. Pero pag mada- mahirap tayong turuan, mahirap tayong i-correct, madalas sinasabi ng Panginoon, say, go, go ahead and have it your way. Kaya nga, maganda po talaga that our hearts are teachable. Ibig sabihin, If we do not, uh, if we stop being teachable, we will stop growing. Kaya, God will help to bring to pass the things that we have set in motion even though they are contrary to His higher purposes for our lives. Kaya, delikado po yun. Minsan, binibigay niya yung gusto natin, pero hindi yan part ng purpose natin. You see, we must be very careful when setting something in motion by our prayers. First, we may, must be sure that it has the approbation of God Almighty on it because once you have been baptized with the Holy Ghost, there is a certain authority and ability to cause things to happen. Meaning, once you are baptized with the Holy Spirit, you have authority. And whatever you declare, it will happen. Okay? Kaya nga, importante sa declaration, the Word of God. Pero minsan kasi, we manipulate the Word of God according to our will. Kaya nga dapat sinasabi ko sa inyo, a word of God is stand forever. Tayo yung nag adjust hindi yung word of God sa buhay natin. Okay? This was the case with Israel. God chose for them, He chose the king they desired. Okay? The so chapter 13, this is where we start, verses 1 to 7, Saul reigned one year, and nothing particular happened. But in his second year, the events recorded this 
chapter took place. For above a, over, above a year, he gave the Philistines time to prepare for war and to weaken and to disarm the Israelites. Kasi nga, itong pagkakataon na to, may nagre na si Saul for a year. Ang nangyari, wala naman siyang ginagawa, hindi siya nagpe-prepare. Kaya nung ang Philistines na nag-arise to attack them, they were not ready. Bakit? Naging kampante po ang si King Saul. In the same way with us. There are times that we are so complacent with our battle is battles in life that we allow the enemy to prevail against us. Masyado tayong uh, hindi alert, hindi tayo awake, and sometimes we cater to our carnality. That's why the enemy is getting stronger. Important po, we are always awake and alert. It has been written in the Bible many warnings sa mga Christians, and yet. Marami na marami pa rin kampante, especially now. Uh, maraming uh, Christmas season. It's very, very uh, time na busy ang tao sa so shopping, sa kainan, and everything. We become so uh, entangled with the world. Samantalang sabi ng Panginoon na we need to go against the tide. Kaya nga, many times, pagka Christmas, all the more that we will be Uh, tanda ito, be still. Bakit? Kasi pagpasok ng 2022, doon mo makikita ang many Christians, ang kanilang spiritual condition because they have been complacent for the last quarter of the previous year. Now, sabi dito sa verse 11, 12, and Samuel said, kasi may instruction po si Samuel kay Saul. If you recall, so sabi sa chapter 10, hintayin mo ako sa Gilgal, okay, dahil mag-o-offer ako kasi nga may war, okay? May may battle na naman. So parang ang confidence nila wins, we offer a burnt offering to you, Lord, tutulungan mo kami sa battle na to. Kaya lang si Samuel, ang problema niya is it's very slow in coming. So sabi din sa verse 11, 12, Samuel said, "What have you done?" Saul said, "Because I saw that the people were scattering from me, And that you did not come within the days appointed, and that the Philistines were assembled at Mikmash. I thought the Philistines will come down now upon to Gil upon me to Gilgal, and I have not made supplication to the Lord. So I forced myself to offer a bird offering. No, Saul's confidence was with men in men. Kasi sabi niya, nakita niya yung reaction ng mga kasama niya, yung army niya, okay? Yung army niya na natatatakot. Kaya wala siyang ginawa, kundi mag-offer. Hindi siya allowed mag-offer kasi he was not called to be a priest. And then, na-delay si Samuel. So, nakita natin dito, so, there are things that God allows in our life kasi tinitignan niya sa isang pagkakataon, susunod ba tayo sa sinasabi ng Panginoon? Kasi many times, when we are under pressure, doon tayo bumibigay, doon tayo nagko-compromise, doon tayo nagdi-disobey. You see, when we are being pressured, that is the time that God is testing the heart. And sa verse 13 and 14, sabi dyan, And Samuel said to Saul, You have done foolishly. You have not kept the commandment of the Lord your God, which He commanded you. For the Lord would have established your kingdom over Israel forever. Okay, listen to this verse. Okay, this is very important. Although Saul was man's choice, God's plan for him is his kingdom, his his kingship. God will establish it forever. Kung na-establish yun, wala sana si David. And yet, the plan of God was to establish him forever, his lordship, his kingdom. Ibig sabihin, ang magmamana sa kanyang kaharian ay ang anak niya. Di ba masarap po yun na ang lahat ng pinagkapaguran natin, ang magmamana is within the, our family, our children, our apo. So, nakita natin, you have not kept, sabi niya, the commandment of the Lord. So, because of that, sabi niya, God will not establish your kingdom. In many ways, if God saw na hindi natin ini-embrace ang ultimate calling natin, He will not establish your, what? The calling itself. Makikita mo, darating tayo, kaya pala sabi ko, ba't maraming nawawala sa calling nila? Kasi it's not really established in them. Kasi merong mga disobedience. Hindi nila talaga half-hearted talaga sila kay Lord. You see, the moment that God wa- if you want God to preserve you, always keep the commandments of God. 
Kasi dito pa lang, kahit nga mali yung umpisa ni Sol, eh, marami na siyang palpak, hindi siya God's choice, man's choice. And yet, makita mo that everything can be redeemed. You see, I told you before, you can see and know the character of God through the reading of the Word. Kita mo, hindi siya choice ni Lord, pero may plano pa lang, Diyos, establish niya yung kingdom ni Sol. So sabi ko, Lord, ang, 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 ang buti mo talaga, you are so faithful. And yet, but now, your kingdom shall not continue. You see? Because of that one of disobedience. Huh? So, marami rin pong ganyan na mga Christians who are in the ministry and yet, hindi na sila nagkaroon ng approval ni Lord. Okay? So, Lord has sought out David, a man after his own heart. And the Lord has commanded him to be prince and ruler over his people because you have not kept what the Lord commanded you. Our disposition to obey or disobey God will often be proved by our behavior in things which appear small. Men see nothing but Saul's outward act which seems small, but God saw that he did this with unbelief and distrust of his providence. Bakit po nagkakaroon ng disobedience? Number one, unbelief. Hindi mo kayang sumunod kasi meron kang unbelief. Hindi solid ang faith mo. And then what happened? Then makikita natin na wala tayong stability. Na, na, uh, I experience, I, I experience in my life, my stability is based on God's grace and mercy in my life. Yet, my role is to keep the commandment of the Lord. So, two-way palagi po ang Christian life. Hindi pwedeng si Lord lang nagbibigay ng pangako. Wala kang ginagawa. May gagawin tayo. At our choices will determine if God will do His part or not. If we will be preserved or not, nasa atin po yun. In verse 19, now, Ang nakakalungkot dito, sabi niya, there was no metal worker to be found throughout the land of Israel for the Philistines said, let the Hebrews make swords or spears. Neglect of soul. Bakit? Di ba one year, wala siya ginawa? Hindi niya nag-prepare. Imagine walang metal sword, walang weapon ng mga Israelites. So, paano mangyayari? So, yung miserable nila is you destitute of the whole armor of God. In the New Testament, if we are not wearing the whole armor of God, we are not fully equipped for the battle. Okay? So, si Saul, as a leader, hindi siya nag-prepare sa mga, mga, mga army niya. Hindi niya hinanda. In the same way, when a leader, when a pastor will not prepare the congregation for hard times because they are not preaching the word of God, the whole counsel of God, magiging malambot ang mga members. Kaya nga, Dalawa lang yan eh. It's either through the preaching of the word, titibay ang mga tao na nakakarinig because they apply the word of God or maghihina sila at patuloy silang uh, bibigyan ng Panginoon ng stumbling block dahil hindi sila talagang sumusunod, hindi nila ina-apply ang word of God sa boy nila. Darating ang time, makikita mo, mahihina yung mga yan. Ano nangyayari? Madaling ma-offend, karnal, at else, hindi effective. Kaya, tignan natin, ilang months na po ako nagpipreach? From July, December, six months na. Matatapos na ang taon. What had happened? What has happened to all of you? Meron po ba tayo in-adjust? Meron po ba tayo in-apply? O pareho pa rin? Kasi, napipunta tayo rito, makikinig tayo ng preaching, and yet, after a while, after a while, pag-uwi natin, kanya-kanya tayo, pagtapos ng Zoom, Business as usual. Wala tayong inadjust. Every time when I preach the gospel, I preach to you this message, the whole week, I, I, I ask the Lord to evaluate me, really examine my heart so that I will be worthy. Ako yung nag adjust Naiintindihan ko bakit ang nangyayari to kasi He made me go through what I'm preaching so that it will really embed Pag ina-apply natin, the word becomes flesh, we become what? Stronger, we have an inner strength to fight the battles that we are facing. Now, in chapter 14, verse 1 to 15, dito, Saul seems to have been quite a loss and unable to help himself. Those can never think themselves safe who see themselves out of God's protection. Now, he sent for a priest and the ark. He hopes to make up matters with the Almighty by a partial reformation. 
As many do whose hearts are unhumbled and unchanged. Para bang humingi sila ng tulong sa yung art para magtanong, okay? Pero yung heart niya half-hearted. Many love to have ministers who prophesy smooth things to them. Jonathan felt a divine impulse and impression, okay? Putting him upon this bold adventure. Kasi si Jonathan, uh, hindi siya nagpalang sa father niya, nag-adventure siya at talagang kinalaban niya yung Philistines, okay? So, makita naman natin yan. If you read the Bible, I don't have to, uh, 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 tawag na ito, ihimay-himay yan kasi alam niyo naman yung chapter niya yan. God will direct the steps of those that acknowledge Him in all their ways and seek to Him for direction with full purpose of heart to follow His guidance. Makita natin si Jonathan, ang, ang lakas ng loob. Di ba na-encounter natin yan sa Joshua even in a previous uh, books? That it is God who gives us bravery. Siya ay nagbibigay ng tapang. Bakit? Kasi may ipapagawa sa atin. Siya ay nagdadirect. Ngayon, pag may pinagagawa sa atin, hindi na tayo nasusunod, makikita natin na tatama rin na tayo. Ang, next, ang uh, attitude natin, tatama rin na tayo. Ayaw na natin, nawawalan tayo ng gana. And then secondly, wala na tayong lakas ng loob. Kaya importante na pag may pinagagawa sa atin ng Panginoon, umpisa, may kabakan, tatakot ka, may alinlangan ka, but go for it. Why? Because you heard the Lord that ito yung pinagagawa sa iyo. That's so the reason why na hindi lahat talaga, sabi ko nga, when God gives us a task, assignment, it is usually impossible. Why? Kasi kung kaya natin yan, hindi kay God yan. Pero pag hindi natin kaya yan at nagawa, nangyari, si Lord John, so He will get the glory. In verse 24, But the men of Israel were distressed that day, for Saul had caused them to take an oath. Kasi nga, nung nakalaban, natalo na ni Jonathan yung Philistines, nagkagulo. So nakita ni Saul na, oy, nagkakagulo na yung mga Philistines, naglaban-laban para sila nga, para silang nag-diminish bigla kasi nakita nila sa baba, sa valley, kasi nasa, nasa hill sila, ang laki, ang daming multitude of army of Philistines. Pero nung nagkagulo, dahil natalo ni uh, Jonathan, napatay niya yung mga at least 20, nagkagulo kasi nagkaroon din ng earthquake. So natarantay yung mga Philistines, sila-sila talagang they left, tapos nag-away-away. So nung nakita ni, ni Saul na, uy, Medyo nagkakagulin kalaban natin. Nagkaroon siya ng vow. Ano sabi niya? Na walang kakain hanggat hindi natin natatalo yung kalaban. Okay? So none of men tasted any food. Anong napansin natin dito? Saul started losing wisdom. Because of one that disobedience, nag-uupisa na siya, nag-diminish na ang wisdom. Hindi yan automatic na mawawala ka agad. Unti-unti. Okay? I witnessed that. Merong mga Christians, mga workers, na because they have not obeyed God, unti-unti nawawala na yung wisdom and the anointing. In verse 37-38, And Saul asked counsel of God, Shall I go down after the Philistines? Will you deliver them into the hand of Israel? But he did not answer him that day. Na, ito po ang nakakatakot when you are seeking God. And God won't answer, not because He was testing you, simply because He was displeased. Then Saul said, "Draw near, all the chiefs of the people, and let us see how this sin, causing God's silence, arose today. We should always first suspect and examine ourselves, but an unhumbled heart suspects every other person. So hindi siya masagot ng panginoon. Ang, ang, ang suspicion niya, merong may lady dito, may nagkakamali dito. Di ba gano'n naman usually? Before i-examine natin sarili natin, binibintang natin kagad sa kapwa natin. Eh, kasi itong taong to, kasi ito ko to, kaya ito nangyayari. Before po natin mag-accuse ng iba, tingnan mo po na natin ang puso natin. You see, as a church, God sees us corporately. So, marami pong problema ngayon ang ministry and facing a terrible uh, challenges, difficulties. And yet, the very first thing, as you sabi ko, tinatanong ko, Lord, what's wrong with me? And when I settled it with God, tuturo niya itong taong to nagkukos, itong taong to nagkukos ng trouble. So, you know what I said? Lord, if this person's causing trouble, then put a stumbling block para mawala siya. 
kasi I will not tolerate yung indifference ng mga yan. So makita natin na sometimes, kasi mahirap naman kausapin yung tao na, oy, sasabihin mo, alam mo, nakakakos ka ng gulo, pero in the outside, wala ka namang nakikita. Pero yung lifestyle, yung pag-uugali, yung mga pinupost sa FB, yung mga mangyaya, may yung mga salita-salita, it will really cause trouble. Okay? Kasi sabi ko nga sa inyo, di ba, sa during ACAN, you cannot sin to yourself if you are part of the ministry. Every decision you make will affect everything, everyone and everybody. Okay? Kaya nga sabi ko, if you're causing trouble, Lord, put a stumbling block. Verse 45, But the people said to Saul, kasi nung nalaman ni Saul na yung anak niyang tumikim ng honey, sabi niya, ikaw mamatay ka kasi curse is the one. So ano nangyari dito? So si Saul, nakita niya yung anak niya, yun ang may sala kasi nga kumain ng honey dahil nag-vow nga siya eh, na walang kakain hanggat di nila nata- natatalo yung kaaway. Then imagine, anong wisdom mo? Lalaban yung army mo, di mo pakakainin. So paano lakas nila, di ba? So yung silence ng Diyos, binintang niya, dito, nung in-expose na kung sino yung talagang may sala, it was Jonathan. Kasi sabi niya, papatayin ka, I need to kill you. Pero makita mo yung defense ng mga tao sa kanya. But the people said to Saul, Shall Jonathan, who has wrought this great deliverance to Israel, die? God forbid, as the Lord lives, there shall not one hair of his head perish, for he wrought this great deliverance with God this day. So the people rested Jonathan, and he did not die. What else was losing aside from wisdom? Authority. Alam mo ang hari, pag sinabi niya, sinabi niya, kailangan mangyari. Pero for these people to contradict the 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 word of King Saul, ibig sabi at hindi naman din kumontra si Saul. So makita mo na he was really losing authority. In chapter 15, the sentence of condemnation against the Amalekites had gone forth long before, but they had been spared till they filled up the measure of their sin. So, yung Amalekites, meron talagang judgment yan. Pero bakit it took long bago na ipataw ng Panginoon? Even in us, okay, bago pataw ni Lord Jesus, it will take time. Bakit? Kasi He was looking and waiting for humility and repentance. Pero pag walang repentance, at hindi natin ina-acknowledge that we have sinned against God, we continue to harden our hearts, and then makita natin that God will bring about the judgment. Ito yung nangyari sa Amalekite. Remember, uh, in Genesis, nakita natin, na, di ba sabi, that uh, uh, God will judge uh, the world, the earth, para, through flood. Okay? Kaya nga, nung nagkaanak si, Metus, uh, si Iinok, dapat sabi niya, when Methuselah, Methuselah dies, he will what? Then the, the, the judgment will come. Okay? So, ang pangalan ni Methuselah is, when he dies, it will come. Okay? Napansin natin, sa Genesis, he's the longest man alive. He lived 900, uh, I, I don't recall how, how many years, pero he's the longest. So, ibig sabihin, that God's patience was so long. Napakagrabe ng patience ng Panginoon. Kaya nga, yung Amalekites, when the, their sin was in full measure, then that's the time God commanded the Israel to annihilate even the children. Okay? In verse 11, 12, kaya lang hindi sinunod ni King Saul. Si, kasi sinabi ni Samuel sa kanya, oh, this is another chance for you to obey God. Okay? Kaya lang hindi na naman siya sumunod. In verse 11, 12, regret making Saul king. Okay, nakaka ang, ang sakit naman noon no, sinabi ni Lord, I regret making Saul king. So I pray na wala pong masasabi si Lord sa atin na I regret you using you for you have done this. For he has turned back from following me and has not performed my command. Imagine like, pinagsisihan ng Diyos na si Saul ang ginawa niyang king. How I pray, Lord, sabi ko nga, Lord, that it will never happen to me, that you will never regret choosing me, because I will really be all out to you. And Samuel was grieved and angry with Saul, and he cried to the Lord all night. When Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, he was told, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set up for himself a monument, a trophy. 
of his victory and passed on and went down to Gilgal. Grabe, no? Parang uh, napaka-pride na niya. Why did... Sa- so, kinufront siya ni Samuel. So, sabi dyan sa verses 90-20, Why then did you not obey the voice of the Lord? but swoop down upon the plunder and did evil in the Lord's sight. Kasi sinabi niya, wala kayong kukunin. Lahat, yeah, sa papatay niyo, lahat ng uh, animals, lahat, everything, okay? Saul so said to Samuel, Yes, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord and have gone the way which the Lord sent me and have brought Aga, king of Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amal- Amalekites. So nakita natin dito yung... Uh, pangangatwira ni Saul. Ano sabi niya? Yes, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. So, many times when you ask the Christian, kamusta ka? Okay ako. Sumusunod ako kay Lord. Ano yung obedience mo? Kanilong standard? Standard mo standard ni Lord? Kasi meron tayong sariling standard eh. Di ba sabi nga dyan na there is a way that seems right to man. Para sa tingin natin, tama. Pero sa tingin ng Diyos, mali. Kaya nga, pag when we are being corrected, when we are uh, being uh, <coughs> tagmeto discipline, ano sinasabi natin? Wala na yung kasalanan na saan, saan mo binase. Kailangan binabase natin lahat yan sa standard ng Diyos, sa Word of God, sa sinasabi niya. So, 22 to 23, I changed the version, I, I used the New Living Translation, but Samuel replied, what is more pleasing to the Lord, your burnt offerings and sacrifices or your obedience to His voice? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than offering the fat of ram. Rebellion is as sinful as witchcraft and stubbornness as bad as worshipping idols. So because you have rejected the command of the Lord, He has rejected you as king. So nakita natin dito, ano sabi dyan? Na obedience is very important before God kaysa yung paglilingkod natin sa Diyos sa ayaw naman natin sumunod sa everyday life natin. Walang nababago, wala tayong ina-adjust. Pero ang pinagmamalaki natin, nagsaserve naman ako kay Lord. Nasa ministry naman ako, mga kapatid. This is a warning to all of us. Your ministry, your serving to God, do not matter before Him without obedience. Kasi sabi niya dyan, rebellion is as sinful as a witchcraft. When we do not obey God, we are rebelling as, we are considered as rebellion. And it is like a witchcraft. So, because you have rejected the command, He has rejected you. Marami pong mga Christian sa loob ng ministry rejected by God. Kaya nga wala nang buhay ang church eh. Wala nang masasa, wala nang naituturong tama. Bakit? Because God has not given revelation to the preacher of that church because the preacher himself is disobeying God. Balik mo po. The root of witchcraft is rebellion. Rebellion is to reject the authority of God. Remember that. Rebellion is to reject the authority of God. Okay. You cannot exist for long without legitimate authority. So if you do not have legitimate authority, it will be replaced by illegitimate authority. And if you have illegitimate authority, then it's supported by illegitimate power. That is why many churches are riddled with demonic manifestations and deceptions. This is what I witnessed in my mission travels. Maraming nagsasabi during praise and worship, nagiiyakan pa, Lord, you are here. But because sanay ako sa presensya ng Diyos, I could discern na wala talaga ang Diyos doon. What was manifesting was the evil spirit. Even among Christians who are operating in the gifts, akala nila si Lord John. Kasi marami nagsasabing Christian, sabi ni Lord. We have this common uh, expression, sabi ni Lord, sabi ni Lord. Pero it was not the Lord who was speaking to them. That's why many churches are riddled with demonic manifestations and deceptions. Trademarks of witchcraft, manipulation, intimidation, domination. These are all for the purpose of control. Remember what I said. 
Kung hindi po tayo sumusunod sa authority ng Diyos, we are not under the authority of God. Meaning, if this is God and this is you, you are not under the authority of God. So, hindi ka pwedeng tumagal na wala kang authority above you. So, if we lang authority si Lord sa buhay natin, anong nangyayari? Illegitimate authority will come in. Kaya nga may mga gifts na akala nila si Lord, pero hindi si Lord kasi makikita mo ang daming disobedience. So, there are times God can still use because the gifts are irrevocable. Pwede pa rin magamit si Lord sa gifted people yan. But the thing is, makita mo ang bunga. Kaya marami mga churches, maraming mga manifestations. I was in, uh, or I was, uh, I, I believe one of the provinces in Mindanao. Usually naman kasi, pag may conference, the following day, nandun ako magpipreach sa church nila. I really saw a very big demon beside the pulpit. So, yun yung nang, nang uh, nag-hover. So, sabi ko, Lord, bakit ganito? May demons, ang laki-laki. Paano ako mag-preach? Sabi niya, greater is he that is in you, grace. So, nung nag-preach ako, nawala siya. Pero pag tapos ko, ando na naman siya. So, the pulpit is very important because we get the authority behind the pulpit. That's why it is important that every word, everything that we do behind the pulpit is honoring God. So that, sabi nga, di ba, last week, those who honor me, I will honor. That's why it's important that no demon spirits will really hover. Kaya nga, like ko sinasabi, Lord, I pray that you will stand beside me and your angels. Kaya nga, one time when I was in, uh, I think, Cagayan de Oro, uh, someone took the picture. Nagpipreach ako. Alam mo yung nakita sa camera ng uh, cellphone niya, I think uh, iPad niya, it was cloud. Puro cloud. Hindi ako nakita kasi cloud. Sabi ko, Lord, ano yan? Sabi niya, Grace, my very glory was around you that time when you were preaching. Could you imagine that? That the kind of favor that I experienced with God. Kaya nga, sabi ko nga eh, hindi yan nangyayari lang during my preaching. Who I am from Monday to Saturday na walang nakakakita is very important before God. Kaya importante rin sa atin lahat na who we are from Monday. Hindi lang Sunday. Hindi lang yung pagdating sa Sunday. Ay, ano, hello sister, hello brother. Ang babait natin, ang banal natin. Pero from Monday to Saturday, yung bibig natin. Hindi tama sa mga pananalita. Uh, you know what? I checked, I checked. Kaya sabi ko kasi when I... Uh, uh, in inactivate ko yung FB ko, marami na yung sabi na ganito ganyan, may mga makasamaan kami, may mga dating nakasamaan ko mag-post. Sabi ko, how can you come to the church worshiping God and yet ang post mo sa FB from Monday to Saturday is not God honoring? You should honor God even in the small things. Kaya madalas hindi na nagagamit. Bakit? Walang spirit ni Lord na eh. Nai-reject me eh. Di ba si Saul nung ni-reject ni Lord, hindi naman niya nahinto ang pagiging hari niya. Nanatili siyang hari, pero hindi na niya kasama ang Diyos. Pwede tayong manatili sa ministry, wala si Lord. And I witnessed that. Ano nangyayari sa church? Okay? Common traits, when there is witchcraft, they make you feel guilty to gain approval. Okay? So, dapat merong natural order. Husband and wife. Wife submit to the husband. Church setting. Members submit to the leaders. The Holy Spirit does not make us feel guilty, but He convicts us to bring us to repentance. In verse 24, and Saul said to Samuel, I have sinned. Sinabi niya, nagkasala ko. For I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord and your word, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Imagine, Alam niya, oh why, nagkasala ako, sinatakot ako sa mga kasaman ko, natakot ako sa mga tao. You see, fear of man is a, is a snare, a trap. Saul said, I have sinned. Hinulit pa niya, nagkasala ako. Yes, honor me. Now, I pray you before the elders of my people and before Israel, and return with me that I may worship the Lord your God. Imagine, di ba pag nagkasala ka, wala ka nang, wala ka nang initid, di kundi Lord, I just want to be restored. Kaya nga si David na nagkasala, ano, restore to me the joy of my salvation. Siya hindi eh. Ang hiningi niya, i-honor mo pa ako sa harapan ng tao. There are Christians na kinokorek, magpapakorek ko no. Kaya sabi, ah, I have sinned. Pero wala naman sa heart. 
part nila para lang ano to justify at hindi sila maalis. In verse 35, And Samuel came no more to see Saul until the day of his death. Though Samuel grieved over Saul, and the Lord repented that he had made Saul king over Israel. Dito, nakita ko sa verse na to, kahit si Samuel, hindi na niya nakita. You know, a king in that time, you need the guidance of a prophet. Without the prophet to guide you and the priest to receive the direction, instruction of the Lord, ano mangyayari? So you're on your own. In the same way with us, if God is not guiding you and because you're not submitting to His authority, you're on your own. That's why many Christians have mixture in their life. Hindi mo alam na ano, kung si Lord ba yung kausap na ito, o sarili lang niya o ibang spirito. You cannot trust. That's why it is important makita sabi ni Lord. I always ask God, Lord, how will I know someone? Ano mo sabi niya? Know them by their fruits. Their life from Monday to Saturday. Not on Sunday. Madaling makadaya ng linggo, mga kapatid. Chapter 16. Samuel sent to Bethlehem to Jesse. Ito na. David is anointed. Samuel anointed Saul king with a vial. Napansin natin, di ba? Na dalagdala ni Samuel nung nag-inanoint niya si Saul, battle. Okay? Battle of oil. A battle is handmade, speaking of man's efforts. In contrast, David was anointed with oil that came from a horn. Alam niyo yung horn? Yung pang uh, horn, nabi sa pagal ng horn. Okay? Doon nilagay yung oil, which speaks of God's creation. So talagang galing sa Panginoon. Verse 7, But the Lord said to Samuel, Look not on his appearance. Kasi nga, tinitignan ni Samuel eh, yung panganay, ah, siguro ito kasi malaki. Alam mo yun, talagang body build siya or the height of his stature, for I have rejected him, for the Lord sees not as a man sees. For, um, for man looks on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. You see? Kaya nga, sabi ko, Lord, salamat, tinitignan mo ang puso. Kasi di ba, ako in my life, I've been rejected, I've been persecuted, maligned, slandered, criticized. And yet, God continue to, you know, give his approval, his, his anointing, his revelation, everything. Then God encouraged me, I look at the heart really. So that really encourages us. Okay? Kahit people will judge you, it doesn't matter because God is the one who knows our heart. In verse 13, 14, Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed David in the midst of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Na-anoint siya. Nandun yung ano, Spirit of the Lord. And Samuel arose and went to Ramah. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. And an evil spirit from the Lord tormented and troubled him. Ito yung sinasabi ko. Ayaw mo sumunod. You're not under God's authority. Dahil nawala na yung Spirit of God, then another spirit will come in. Kaya check natin ang life at ang ministry. Am I? Is that ministry still under God's ano, guidance and leadership? As long as the leader under the uh, instru- uh, leadership of God and the authority of God, we are safe. Okay? The Spirit of the Lord departed from Him. If God and His grace do not rule us, sin and Satan will have possession of us. Ulitin ko po, para maintindihan natin. Okay? If God and His grace do not rule us, sin and Satan will have possession of us. The devil, by the divine permission, may permiso ng Diyos, troubled and terrified soul by the corruption of his body, the passion of his mind. He grew fretful, peevish, and discontented, and at times a madman. It appears that soul was grown very wicked. Pagka nakikita po natin ang Christian na nawala na ang Diyos sa kanya, Nakikita mo si becomes very wicked, ingetera, chismosa, palaaway. Imbis na nagiging puro, nagiging malala. Okay? Yung pananalita lang, sa pananalita, lumalabas sa bibig. That's why in Matthew 12.45, sabi ni Panginoon, even Jesus Christ, okay, concern this. Then it goes and brings with it seven other spirits more wicked than itself. 
and they go in and make their home there. And the last condition of that man becomes worse than the first, so also shall be with this wicked generation. So, pag nawala yung spirit, you'll become worse. Because na-cleanse ka, at hindi ka tumunod, nag-rebelde ka sa Diyos, another spirit will come in. You become worse. In chapter 17, this is where the story of David and Goliath, okay, the Goliath challenge, then, nakita na, description of Goliath. Okay. Kasi, nag, ano sila, uh, for 40 days, minamak ni Goliath ang mga uh, Israelites, even the army. Okay. So, Goliath is a giant. He represents an enemy that could not be overcome by natural forces, whether human strength or natural wisdom or ability. Goliath appeared for 40 days and nights, not giving up his opposition, intimidation, and mocking of Israel. His height was six cubits, six fingers, and six toes. Normal, ang dami, anim-anim. This six picks of work or toiling. So, kasi six picks of man, flesh. To toil means to worry, to be fearful, and to be anxious. So meaning, pag ikaw lagi kang worry, lagi kang anxious, lagi kang takot, may gulayat ka sa buhay mo. This is a subtle way of Satan to deceive the people of God. So number six also speaks of self-righteousness. Goliath's weapon is made of bronze, which speaks of judgment. So, so an, ano yan? Usually, ano yan eh? nag sa mga religious people. Okay. His words are full of condemnation. So, yung mga religious, yung under the law, yung mga religious, yung mga kailangan, mababok mo, dapat mahabari ng damit mo, kailangan naka-long trip ka, yung mga ganyan-ganon. So, speaks of judgment. Kasi takot sila sa judgment. Okay. So, may gulayat. Kasi bakit? Lagi kang takot, lagi kang anxious, lagi kang worried. Okay? Bakit ka matatakot? Bakit ka anxious? Bakit ka worried? That is full of unbelief. You're not trusting God. Ngini, mas malaki ang pinapaniwalaan mo sa kasinungalingan ng kaaway kaysa sa salita ng Diyos. You see, hindi ko sinasabi hindi ako natatakot. I have my fears. Many times. Okay? Especially pag... Uh, I live in the 28th floor, okay? Pagka naramdaman ko na may gumalaw, parang uh, mad- very sensitive po nasa task ka, madala, sabi ko, Lord, andito na naman ako, kita ko na, naramdaman ko parang may konting lindol, mga ganun. But then, the enemy would tell me, hala, babaksak to. Pero sabi ng word, when the earth patters, it is God who holds the foundation. So, Sabi ko Lord, hawak mo to. Eh, sabi rin sa Colossians 1, sabi, sabi niya, di ba, na God holds things together. So sabi ko, ay hindi, di ba baksak to? Kasi you hold this together. Saka nandito ako, may layunin pa ako sa buhay, sa sa kaharian mo, Lord. So hindi pa ako, ano, walang mangyayari sa akin. See? So na, no, wala. So in the same way, pag lalabas ako, din, sabi nila, may Omicron. of the vaccine, nagsaka-COVID din. Pero if God allows you to have the vaccine for the purpose na you can really move freely, go. Go for it. At least, sabi ko, Lord, makakatravel na rin ako. Uh, Over every inter- internet connection that the enemy cannot interrupt, it disrupt, or distract in Jesus' name. Then, okay na? Okay, sorry about that. Uh, ayaw ko 
kasi nang kaawin marinig ko eh. Pero ito, ito sabihin ko sa inyo. Um, before David faced Goliath, he faced lion and bear in his life as a shepherd. So, ibig sabihin, bago tayo kaharap sa malaking mga uh, pagsubok, hinahanda tayo sa maliliit para pag dumaan, dumating sa point na haharapin natin mas malaking pagsubok, ano mangyayari? Kaya natin. Kaya, pag sa maliliit na pagsubok, napapagtagumpayan natin, ibig sabihin, tumitibay at tumitibay tayo hanggat kakayanin natin ng mas malaking pagsubok, greater difficulty, greater challenges, greater obstacles, so that when we overcome these great challenges, we will receive great things from God. Great blessings, great favor, great influence, great lahat. Did you imagine that? Di ba ang sarap nun? Kaya lang naman maraming mga Christians, hindi nila na naranasan ang kadakilaan at ang malalaking pagpapala dahil hindi rin nila napagtatagumpaya yung maliliit na pagsubok. And 37, 38, 7, David said, The Lord who delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, He will deliver me out of the hand of the Philistine. And Saul said to David, Go and the Lord be with you. Then, yun ang confidence niya. Ano yung confidence niya? Nakalala ko nung yung kaharap ko yung lion at saka bear. Kinaya ko, kakayanin ko ito si Goliath. Kasi it does not matter kung gaano kalaki ang kaharap natin at tinatakot sa atin kasi naranasan natin in the past kung gaano kabuti at katapat ang Diyos. Hindi rin niya tayo bibuguin ngayon. Then Saul clothed David with his armor. He put a bronze helmet on his head and clothed him with the coat of men. So, hindi siya fitted sa pinasusun sa Saul. So, ang faith niya, hindi ako pwedeng mag-apply sa faith ko. Yung faith ko, yung na-apply ko. At kung ano man yung pinagagawa sa inyo, hindi ko pwedeng gagawin nyo. Kung ano lang yung para sa akin. Kaya, importante is what? Na meron tayong sariling faith. We will not depend on the faith of our leaders of the people around us, and even the faith of those who have gone before us. David knew that he was able to defeat Goliath. Ito nag-start yan sa heart eh. Kung ikaw, sumarap ka sa mga takot, sa mga alalahanin mo, at nangingibabaw na alam mo, hindi mo kaya, hindi mo kaya. Pero pag ikaw convinced ka, kaya mo yan, dahil ka alam mo, si Lord ang kasama mo kakayanin mo yan. It starts from what? The conviction within us. The mindset. Kaya nga pag ang mind mo is determined, no, hindi ako, hindi ako magpapatalo. It's in the same way, no? There are many times in, uh, in, the, in the, the whole week, I will have physical affliction. Siyempre, eh, ang uh, laging uh, ano sa akin ng uh, mga kapatid ko, meron na, basta takbo ka lang sa ER. You know, in-enroll pa nga ako ng you know, yung app na may ambulansya, pindutin mo lang, pipick up ka ng ambulansya. Sabi ko, hindi ko kailangan yan. Kasi there times I have so much affliction because of my medical condition. Alam mo, sabi ko, no. Kasi sasabihin ng kawa, ya, yeah, pa-confine ka namin, may mangyayari sa'yo. Sabi ko, no. Hindi na ako ko-confine. I'm already healed. Convinced ako dun eh. So, lalaban ako, magpipray ako, and then finally, maglilift off yung affliction. Why? Tinitingnan ng kaaway kung bibigay ako sa takot ko. Or, maninindigan ako sa sinasabi ng Diyos sa buhay ko. Lagi yan, ganyan yan. And the more I really stood in the truth, the more it strengthened my faith. He received ten loaves. So si, si David, di ba inutusan ng tatay niya, ano sabi? He received ten loaves which speaks of the law. And ten cheeses speak of the spoken word of God to him. David who obeyed the law and the spoken word to him. Blessed, happy, fortunate, sabi sa Psalm 1191. To be envied are the undefiled, the upright, truly sincere and blameless in the way of the revealed will of God. Hindi naman hihingi ni Lord sa atin, o gawin mo to, kung hindi naman niya sinasabi. Kaya nga dito sa Amplified, I really like Amplified, sabi niya, to the revealed will. Merong sinabi, okay? Who walk, order their conduct and their conversation. Hindi lang conduct, conversation. In the law of the Lord, the whole of God's revealed will. 
So, akala natin, yung pag-ugali natin, yung mga how we conduct ourselves in the front of people, eh, yun lang ang matters to God. Hindi even our conversation, yung pananalita natin from Monday to Saturday, nung walang mga Kristiyanong nakapaligid sa atin, paano po ang mga pananalita natin? Minsan, hindi po ka nais-nais nakakahiya, mga lumalabas sa bibig. Kaya nga sabi niya, kung sino man ang inaayos yung iyong pag-ugali, yung iyong pamumuhay at yung pananalita, doon ako magpapahayag na kapangyarihan. David speaks in faith constantly in that chapter. He confessed what God could and would do. In verse, uh, in verse 40, Then he took his staff in his hand, chose five smooth stones from the stream, put them in the pouch of his shepherd's bag, and with his sling in his hand, approached the Philistines. Five smooth stones speaks of grace, because five speaks of grace. He took them from the stream or river, which speaks of the Holy Spirit. Water speaks of, river speaks sometimes of the Word, and sometimes of the Holy Spirit. First stone speaks of righteousness, mother of all blessings. Then, sabi dyan, David said to the Philistines, You come against me with a sword and a spear and a javelin, but I come against you in the name of the Lord Almighty, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you have defiled. You see, pag tayo tinitrepe ng kaaway, pag tayo tinatakot ng kaaway, minamak tayo ng kaaway, kinokondem tayo, anong sabi niya? Dinidify mo at uh, minamak mo ang Diyos ko. Okay? Whom you have defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands and I will suck you down, cut off your head. This very day I will give the carcass of the Philistine army to the birds and the wild animals and the whole world will know that there is God in Israel. Grabe yung sinasabi ni David. You know what? That impacted me. And then sabi dyan, all those gathered here will know that it is not by sword nor spear that the Lord saves. For the battle is the Lord's and He will give all of you into our hands. This is the attitude that God wants us to have as we go into battle against spiritual Goliath that come against us. Ito yung gustong attitude ni Lord sa atin. How do we handle our Goliath pag may natatakot kayo, pag nag-worry kayo, wala ng pera, wala hirap ang buhay, na-anxious ka, ano mangyayari bukas. You see, this is the kind of attitude God is looking for His people. Ano yung lumalabas sa ating bibig? Ano yung attitude natin? Ano yung bunga? David's testimony to show who God is. Yung testimony natin nakikita. Oh, pinapaniwalaan ba natin ang Diyos natin? Ang dami yung nakikinig dyan. Ano bang nangyayari from Monday to Saturday? Pinapahayat nyo ba na ang Diyos nyo ay makapangyarihan? Ang tanong eh, what kind of God do you believe in? Baka ang Diyos niya yung sarili niyo, yung asawa niyo, yung pera niyo. Kaya pagka manawawalan kayo ng pera, ano na nasasabi natin? You see, our attitude in the challenges of life determines that we really believe, if we really believe in our God. Kaya yun ang nakita natin yung verse na yun. It really impacted me. Why? Because it shows if we really believe in God. Ano yung nasasabi natin? There is one conflict in which all the followers of the Lamb are and must be engaged. One enemy more formidable than Goliath still challenges the armies of Israel. But sabi, formidable than Goliath, but resist the devil and he will flee from you. Go forth to battle with the faith of David and the powers of darkness shall not stand against you. But how often is the Christian foiled to an evil heart of unbelief? Saan natatalo ang Kristiyano? Unbelief. Bubunga na yan ng takot. Bubunga na yan ng worry. Bubunga na yan kung ano-ano. Because the root is unbelief. So, Ano mangyayari after today? I pray may mangyari. Mabago tayo. Sa so, chapter 18, the friendship of David and Jonathan was the effect of divine grace which produces the true believers in one heart and one soul and causes them to love each other. This union of souls is from partaking in the spirit of Christ 
where God unites hearts, carnal matters are too weak to separate them. So, yung grace ni Lord nakaka-unite sa atin, nakaka-isa tayo, okay? Those who love Christ as their own souls will be willing to join themselves to Him in an everlasting in an everlasting covenant, it was certainly a great proof of the power of God's grace in David that he was able to bear all this respect and honor without being lifted up above measure. So, ito kasi, marami pong uh, pina, pinipervert tong verse na to. Yung si David and Jonathan, ano daw sila gay? It's not, okay? It is a pure love, pure admiration ni Jonathan kay David. Kaya lang, makikita mo yung nag-iisip ng masama, doon mo makikita anong klaseng pag-iisip meron sila, di ba? And Saul was very angry okay, for the saying displeased him and he said, they have ascribed to David ten thousands, but to me they have ascribed only thousands. What more can he have but the kingdom? Kasi nahangaan na si David at eh, that time eh. And Saul jealously eyed David from that day forward. Saul's weakness was not, he cannot stand. Ito yung weakness ni Saul, okay? Check natin to ha. Baka meron tayo nito. Saul's weakness was he cannot stand people succeeding around him nor gifted people around him. Kasi marami po ako na witness na mga leaders. Hindi nila dinidisciple, hindi nila dinidevelop yung gifts ng mga kasama nila, lalo na they felt threatened. Dapat hindi po tayo nagpe-threaten kasi kailangan natin sila because we need to uh, ilabas yung potential nila. Kasi there are leaders na talaga out of their insecurity, iniisang tabi nila yung mga gifted people para hindi sila masapawan. So, ibig sabihin, pag meron kang pakiramdam na ganyan, hindi ka, hindi ka talaga true servant. You are building your kingdom. It doesn't matter kung nasapawan ka, importante nangyari yung karian ng Diyos at yung kalooban niya. Pero pag meron po tayong mentality na, o iba ka sapawan ako nito, well, get out of the ministry. You will be a ano, stumbling block sa purposes ni Lord. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him but had departed from Saul. Saul was afraid of David because the Lord was with him but departed from Saul. As David served Saul in spite of all Saul's inconsistencies, God taught David many lessons and developed within him very important qualities. Bakit may mga Saul sa ministry? Importante yan kasi to develop qualities. Ako bago po rin bago ta tayo si RCF. Ang dami kong workers, ang daming mga pasaway, ang daming ang titigas, nagsisiraan, nagbiintrigahan, nagchichismisan pati ako tinitira. Sabi ko, Lord, kailan ba sila mawawala? Ginamit sila to develop qualities in my leadership. Nung natapos ang purpose ni Lord sa kanila, si Lord ang nagtanggal sa kanila. Kaya ngayon, hindi natatapos ang pagsala ng Panginoon sa church. Hanggat nandiyan tayo, may purpose si Lord. Ang tanungin lang natin, ako ba, Lord, ang purpose ko, eh para ayusin, ang, para i, 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 alam mo yung character building, quality sa kanila, at darating ang time, aalisin mo rin ba ako? Kailangan tanungin natin, sarili natin, are we the instrument or we are servant? Instrument, ginagamit ni Lord yan, kahit gano'ng katagal sa ministry, darating ang time, God will put a stumbling block matutisod ka sa loob ng ministry at aalisin ka. Kaya ang instrument, ginagamit lang for God's purpose. Servant of God, meaning you follow God. Kaya nga, disciple is a follower of Christ. Kaya nasaan tayo? Are we an instrument or are we a servant of God? Make sure when you say you are a servant, ginagawa mo yung pinagagawa ni Lord. Kaya lang, ang tanong, nagtatanong mo tayo kay Lord. Baka instrument lang tayo. Doon ko nakita, kahit gaano katagal ang isang kristyano sa loob ng means, one way or the other, aalisin ka. Kasi, pampagulo ka. Okay? Natapos na yung purpose mo. David learned the attitude of a true servant. And he maintained this despite the fact that he knew he was anointed to be king. Saul constantly attacked David. Meron dalagang Saul. A-attack, a-attack ka, mamalain ka. I have those. Ang dami kong Saul. My goodness. But as his attacks increased, so did David's wisdom. Yun din ang nangyayari. Mag-increase yung wisdom mo, yung patience mo, yung character building mo. Kaya dati, sinasabi ko, Lord, bakit ganito itong tao ito? Bakit ganyan yun? Bawala na sana sila. 
Pero sabi ni Lord Grace, kung wala sila, hindi ka rin magiging ganyan. So sabi ko, ay salamat sa kanila. Sige, i-ano mo muna sila, gamitin mo sila. Pagtapos sinalis naman ni Lord, okay? When do we need wisdom? When we have to walk as carefully as cut on a wall covered with pieces of jagged glass. Diba, alam mo, when you're around someone, na parang kala mo, lagi kang maingat sa kilis mo, sa salita mo, kasi meron siya ikikritisay sa'yo, meron siya sasabihin, meron siya ipipinta sa'yo, meron siya isisira sa'yo. Kaya, pero may wisdom ka. You don't ka mag sa wisdom kung paano how you behave yourself next. So, if you make a mistake, then you'll be criticized on one side or the other. You do your best to keep your balance. That is surely when you need wisdom of God. It is under those circumstances that God's wisdom is developed. Okay? So, si David, laging nandito sa situation, para pang, so, anytime, papatayin ako nito. Parang ganun din eh, di ba? Parang may mga taong nasa loob ng ministry, ingat ka, kumilos, ingat, hindi ka maging, ako kasi what you see is what you get. Kaya lang, nakikriticize ako. Eh, I don't mind. At least, totoo ako. Hindi yung nagpapaka, nagpapanggap ako. I don't eh. Hindi ko kaya magpanggap. Bakit? Ewan ko. Basta ako. Ano yung ugali ko? Ganun ako eh. He had... So, kailangan din tayo maging totoo. Bakit? Kasi napetest din kung sino yung makasamahan natin. If they're sincere, makikita nila yung weakness mo. Makikita yung kung ano mo. Yung mga kahinaan mo. And if they will pray for you, they will support you in spite of that. Then, there are true people around you. Pero may mga taong totoo sa harap, hindi totoo sa likod. Okay. Next. In verse 30, then the Philistine princes came out to battle. And when they did so, David had more success and behaved himself more wisely than all soul servants so that his name was very clear, dear, and highly esteemed. You see, when we have wisdom, when God, when people see God in us, they will respect you. Okay. In chapter 19, Jonathan reconciles his father to David kasi talagang tinitrete na siya. Ito sunod na. So, so he went on to Naioth in Rama, and the Spirit of God came upon him also and he went on to prophesy until he came to Naioth to Rama. Nahabon na niya to si David. So, pero nung napunta siya sa mga prophet, nahawa siya sa Spirit. Okay? Nag-prophesy siya. Many have great gifts yet no grace. They may prophesy in Christ's name, yet are disowned by Him. Let us daily seek for renewing grace, which shall be in us, as well of water springing up into everlasting life. Gifts have no guarantee that we are living a uh, life that is pleasing before God. In verse third, at chapter 30, dito po yung trials ni David. Met with prepared him for future advancement. Lahat na nangyayari kay David, pinaprepare siya for his you know, uh, kingship. Kaya nga, next week, napakaganda po ng message because it really touches me so deeply from the past when I studied this before, it really ministered to me and I pray that it will minister to you. So, the Lord deals with those whom He prepares unto glory. So, dami ko pong hinaharap ngayon with the ministry, personal, emotional, financial, everything. This is one encouragement of God in my life. I'm preparing you for great things, Grace. Sabi ko, okay, Lord. Kaya tanggap ko na. It's a matter of surrendering. Parang, sige, Lord. Kasi I face with many frustration, many questions, very, bakit ito nangyayari sa ministry? Tapos, nagmumultiply tayo, tapos ang dami rin nawawala sa atin. And then, you know, a lot of things as asking, I'm asking God. Tapos, physically, and then, syempre, marami rin challenges. Then, sabi ko, Lord, sabay-sabay yata. And I'm overwhelmed. It really affects my physical, okay. And then sabi niya, Grace, I'm preparing you for great things. Sabi ko, okay. So I surrender na lang. I surrender ko lang. So, third times, God, when God is preparing us for great things, two, two things lang yan, eh. pag nahirapan tayo, may nangyayari. Tanong natin kay Lord, merong inaayos. Secondly, He's big preparing us for great things. Because God cannot give us and trust us with more if our hearts are not right. Kaya pag great blessing ang makahanda, grabe din yung, you know, pagkilos niya sa puso natin. He will make a deep work in our hearts. So that once we receive the blessing, then masasabi natin, it's from God. It's not from our own, it's only God. Then we will appreciate and be grateful. At while going through that, anong nangyayari? 
kumakapit ako kay Lord. So, natututo ako mag-umasa sa kanya, magtiwala sa kanya para pag dumating ang blessing, wala na bago. Sa kanya pa rin ako maasa, sa kanya pa rin ako nagtitiwala, sa kanya pa rin ako nagtatanong. Ang mahirap kasi, pag dumating ang maraming blessing, hindi na tayo nagtatanong. Hindi na tayo, hindi na tayo umaasa sa Panginoon. That's the danger. God wants us to establish in Him so that when that blessings come, we are already established in Him. Sometimes it appears to us that there is but a step between us and death. At all times it may be so, and we should prepare for the event. But though dangers appear most threatening, we cannot die until the purpose of God concerning us is accomplished. This really encourages me. Hanggat andito ko, hindi tapos ang purpose ni Lord sa buhay ko, I will not die. Because I have so many physical afflictions, kahit sa inyo, yung mga nakakaramdam kayo ng sakit and everything, hanggat hindi tapos ang layunin ng Diyos sa buhay nyo, you will not die. Ang question, sa leksikin nyo yung layunin ng Diyos para secured kayo that you will have long life. Ang mahirap kasi, wala ka, marami ka nang nararamdawa, wala ka pa sa kalooban, walang kasiguruhan. I have heard news na matay ang pastor, na matay ganito, bata pa, and everything, Lord, what's happening? Because of COVID, because of sakit and everything. And yet, ako, I almost died the last year. And yet, I'm still here. Why? Because of the purpose of God. This is this is one thing that we can be secured in God. It doesn't mean di, ka, di mo haharapin maraming pagsugo. Kaharapin mo yan for His purpose. Everything is about the purpose of God. So, hanggat hindi tapos. You see, when you're walking in the perfect will of God, no death will come near you. Kaya nga like I said, that COVID will not touch me. This even medical condition will not kill me. This will not end in death. But it will give glory to God. So, nor till we have served our generation according to His will. Meron pong layunin ng Diyos sa buhay ko, itong generation na to, to prepare them. If we are believers, dapat yun ang saliksikin natin. So, Jonathan generously offers David his services. Kasi this is true friendship. David consults Jonathan kasi nga talagang tinitreten siya. So, nagkaroon sila ng covenant. Next. Ano yung conclusion? At the time when David fought and killed the giant Goliath, Saul was king of Israel. Saul had been anointed by God to be Israel's first king, but his life was a mixture of worldliness and partial obedience to God. The life of Saul con- contrasts vividly with that of David who served Saul for many years. From these two men, we can learn valuable lessons about what characterizes an fruitful Christian, who is Saul, and the qualities of a fruitful Christian, who is David. Saul was like a dead branch, one that is joined to the vine, yet which has no life-giving properties, flowing through its arteries. Consequently, soul produce no fruit. So, kamusta ang bunga ng buhay natin? True fruits, at tinitignan ni Lord. The fruits of the Spirit in us, through the character, through our lifestyle. The other fruits is the ministry. Ilang buhay ang pinagkakatiwala sa atin. The Lord Jesus Christ spoke about people like soul in John 15:2. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he takes away. King Saul was a fruitless branch and eventually God had to take him away to make room for someone who would produce fruit. King David, a man after God's own heart. There are some who are joined to the church but who are not fully obedient to the Lord. The Lord wants those of us who are like this to change. It is always best to hearken and change before God moves so that we will be a part of that great thing He's about to do. May gagawin si Lord eh, worldwide. And um, pinakita niya sa akin that uh, grace, I will entrust you with such authority and power and anointing. But right now, tinatago muna kita. Okay? So, sige lang. Sabi ko gano'n. Sa daming mga pagsubok. Sige lang. The gift of the loaves. Saul was told that he would meet people carrying three loaves of bread, but they would give him only two. Three is a symbol of deity, the Trinity. This sign meant that Saul would not partake of everything that was in the kingdom, 
he would never experience the full measure and glory of God's presence. Next. The gift of prophecy, when Saul left Samuel, God gave him another heart. Naalala natin, di ba? And when he met a group of prophets, Saul started to prophesy to such an extent that those looking on said, is Saul also among the prophets? But the exercise of spiritual gift is not in itself evidence of God's approval. Jesus Christ himself said in Matthew 7, 22, Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have we cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. But Jesus said he would not recognize those who had not walked in obedience to his voice. Kaya nga sabi ko sa inyo earlier, obedience is better than sacrifice. Divided heart, soul was an enigma, a sign. His heart was a divided, he was divided, and because of this, his behavior was inconsistent. Ang taong may hindi pagsunod, hindi consistent, hindi totoo sa harap. Mabait sa harap, sa talikod, iba. Okay? One day, he was on fire for God. Another day, he was walking with the world. The very moment when he should have been there to receive an acclamation of the nation that he was to lead, Saul was hiding among the baggage. Naalala natin, di ba? Nagpapago siya. His action in hiding himself was that of a man who shares responsibility. This is what Saul did virtually all his life. He would never face responsibility and reality head on. In the kingdom of God, we have to face issues squarely. When God speaks, we have to face him and let him deal with our heart. Kasi yan po ang problema. Hindi natin pinapadil kay Lord yung issues ng buhay natin. Pag tayo na confront na ko-correct, nire-deny natin, gina-justify natin, and then we blame others for what's happening sa buhay natin. God will always deal with us, confront issues in our life until we have overcome and remove them out of the way so that we will live the fullness of God's purpose in our life. When God speaks, we have to face Him and let Him deal with our hearts. When faced with decisions, we must make choices. Right choices. So, kamusta po ang pagpili sa mga hinaharap natin? Not just hope. The problem will go away. We can never hide in the kingdom. Yet Saul, who was to lead Israel into battle, hid in shirt in his responsibility. Nagtago sa responsibility. Many Christians do that. They are quite content to go along until there is a time of decision. But we must realize that decisions and choices are what we are made of. Kaya nakikita ang pagkatao mo dahil sa mga pinipili mo na maliliit na bagay sa buhay mo. Lumalabas yan, nakikita because God will create in you according to your choices. God brings us to decisions and choices time and time again. May choices yan. Every day, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly. Pabigat ng pabigat ng choices. Palaki ng palaki ang gigisi-surrender natin. So, I, I'm just sudden that there are times pag malaki na yung pinapapili ni Lord, hindi natin mapili si Lord. Kasi we hold on sa gusto natin. What we decide determines our course. Remember that. When we choose to align ourselves with the word that God has spoken to us, we make right choice and we put our feet on the right path. And it is progressive surrendering as we continue to surrender, surrender, surrender. We are being established in Him. That's why no amount of storm can uproot you. No amount of temptation can make you fall. Why? Because you are rooted in Him. Because based on your past choices, past decisions, hindi yan ngayon lang. Past yan. Kaya ka na-establish because of your past decisions. Kaya ka na wala because of your past decisions. Mahina ka ngayon. 
Pero dahil ikaw from the past, you keep choosing the right and God puts you in the right path, establishing you. When God uh, place a big choice that you will surrender something big, you can say, yes, Lord. Why? Hindi lang ngayon yan. Hinanda tayo in the past. In the past, yung mga decision making natin, may kinalaman niya sa ngayon. Kaya nga, pag ngayon, hindi ka maka-decide for God, is simply because wala kang lakas, wala kang tapang, wala kang lakas ng loob. Bakit? Kasi from the past, ang choices mo palaging mali. Kaya wala kang tibay, wala kang tapang, wala kang pananampalataya para sa mga panahon na ngayon, kailangan mo mag hindi ka maka-decide. Every time we make a wrong choice, we turn our feet out of the way of God. Yet so often, there are those whom God brings to moments of decision who instead of facing the test squarely and being decisive, seek to avoid responsibility or decision just like Saul did. We have to be decisive in the kingdom and we have to face things head on. Kaya like yung sinasabi, face it head on. Complete obedience what God looks for in His people. There are Christians today who, like Saul, do not bear fruit for the Lord. They are not being resolute, not making right choices, and not being wholehearted. They give lip service to the Word of God and the Bible, but they do not obey what God speaks to their own heart. Though joined to the church and joined to Christ, Christ's life is not flowing through them as it once did. The Lord is moving again to bring new life to His church. When God's new life comes into us, the old life will fall off. Kaya importante ang obedience. Why? In 1 Peter 1.22, in the translation, the Passion Translation says, Now, because of your obedience to the truth, you have purified your very souls. And this empowers you to the full of love for your fellow believers. So express this sincere love toward one another passionately with your heart. So ang sinasabi dito? Hindi natin kaya baguhin ang sarili natin. We cannot. Because we are, we have a corrupt being. But the soul, ano nangyayari? Ang hinihingi ni Lord obedience because the moment we obey God and make right choices, He purifies our soul. Then, sincerity will come in because we can now love our brethren. Hindi tayo hipokrita. Hindi tayo hipokrita. The soul must be purified before it can give up its own desires and indulgence. Big sabihin, bago mo ma-surrender, ma-purify muna. And the Word of God planted in the heart by the Holy Spirit is a means of spiritual life stirring up to our duty, working total change in the dispositions and affections of the soul. So, our obedience matters to God more than what we do for Him. Because once we obey God, God can work in our hearts to become what we ought to be. Once He is satisfied with the character, He will bring in more. More, 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 more. But more challenges, greater trials, yet God has prepared greater things as well. Okay? So, we need to humble ourselves before God. Matatapos na po ang taon, mga kapatid. May nabago ba? Uh, the Bohol intercessors shared with me what God said to them during their prayers. Maniningil na daw ang Diyos. Meaning, everything that you've heard from July till now, you will have to give an account. Kasi marami po sa atin, walang nangyari, walang pagsunod, walang pag-adjust. Sabi ni Lord, I am asking for accounting. Kasi ito yung problema eh. Wow, bless kami. Ang ganda ng message, pastora. Okay, salamat. Glory to God. Pero business as usual. When uh, something arises in your situation, kasi tinipes ka na, same pa rin ang pag-uugali ina-apply. Hindi mo na sabi, hindi mo na itanong, bakit nangyayari ito, Lord? Minsan, sinasabi natin, eh, kasi ganito. Hindi eh. Hindi mo natumbok yung gustong sabihin sa'yo ni Lord eh. 
Alam mo, sabi ko, Lord, put a stumbling block sa mga to para sila na mismo ay. God doesn't need multitude to fulfill, to advance His kingdom. He just needs Elena. na. He chose 12. Mag-choose nga siya ng 72 pa, di ba? Sa disciples. And yet, when He preached a hard truth, ano sabi ng mga disciples niya? This is a hard truth. Tumalikod. Disciples yun. Kaya nga kayo ng 14, 12 disciples, aalis din ba kayo? Sabi ni Peter, sa kami pupunta na sa yung uh, salita ng buhay. You see, the word of God is life. Even rebuke is life. That's why I, I enjoy studying. And I enjoy every trials that really much that study. Alam niyo mo ba, every time there new revelation, it's a new trials in my life, new testing in my life, new difficulties, new challenges in my life. And yet, narealize ko, Lord, ito pala yun. Ito pala ibig sabihin ito. Now, the word becomes fresh. Why? Because it becomes a reality. I experience the word of God, meaning, na experience ko si Jesus Christ kasi He is the word. This is what the word, the eternal life is. This is eternal life coming Jesus Christ. It's to know you. You know what knowing God? Experience Him. Kaya maraming pagsubok para maranasan natin yung sinasabi ng Diyos sa buhay natin. Para mabago tayo. Para maging saksi tayo sa mundo. We are a testimony. Kaya nga sabi niya, yun ang gusto niya attitude just like David. What is your testimony from Monday to Saturday? Are you telling the world, this is my God, this is how He did, what He did in my life? Ito yung ginawa niya. Ito yung nangyari sa akin. Ito yung ginawa niya. Do you have a testimony every day? Or you just what? Just like so. Time to change. 2022 na, mga kapatid. 2022 na. In a few weeks, 2022 na. Kung di ka na bago nitong last quarter, dala mo pa rin yan, 2022. Ako this year, nagulat ako, tatlo, nung nawala sa ministry sa kamarin. Tatlo rin, sa gawaw, at pang, mayroon pang wala-wala. Sabi ni Lord Jack, dito at saka sa alis. Hindi ko makalain yun, ha? Kaya sabi ko, Lord, preserve the people. Ano problema? So, so, can't pray that you will be preserved. Ngayon po ba? Father, I thank you for your message and I pray that everyone will really meditate on the message. Adjust to your word everything that you have convicted us all throughout this message. Let us not be hearers of the word, but be doers of your word, Lord. I fully entrust your people to the Holy Spirit that you will continue to move in their hearts. Speak to them, Lord, before the year ends. May mabago. Merong isuko. At may realization. Sa, para pagpasok ng 2022, Lord, they will continue to be strengthened and established in your purposes. I pray, Father God, that those who are not sincere expose their evil deeds of darkness so that they will continue to be dealt with, addressed, and corrected. Father, I thank you for your message. Thank you for my strength. Thank you for even for the things that I've gone through in life. It is you made me what I am today because of your grace. It's only by grace. Thank you, Father, and I give you all the grace, the blessings, the majesty, the praises, and the thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen.